There are five levels of autonomy in cars today as per the new definition of SAE. Um, we are already having level two cars on road today, so a Tesla autopilot is a level two car. Level three, level four cars will start coming in within the next 18 to 24 months. Um, some car companies will jump from level two to level four. Now it's very important to understand what these level means. So level four means where the car can take over handover from you and can drive, but it is not possible in a level four car to drive in any environment. That's where we talk about level five. So level five is where the car is completely autonomous, irrespective of the driving conditions, and it can take you from A to B in, in normal speeds. We do not expect to see level five before 2030. Level three, level four, which will start coming in within the next 18 months. We expect, uh, as per Frost & Sullivan updates, about 18 million autonomous cars sold annually by 2030. Now, what is interesting is our analysis shows that half of these cars will go into the usership model. So the ride-hailing companies like Uber, uh, DD, these will be the first key buyers of these cars. So very exciting up, you know, in the future. One could go from hands off, eyes off, mind off to completely brain off driving by 2030. There are a number of reasons why we don't have autonomous cars on the road. The first one is legislation. We still need to have that legislation which approves driving these cars. Drivers can take hands off. Insurance and regulation on who is responsible if there is a mishap. So a lot of these things will need to be solved. Technology is another big issue. Uh, we need, for example, uh, at least 4G in all our roads. It needs to be 100% coverage because we need HD maps in play. Um, also, we need the sensing technology to be perfect. We need the AI systems like deep learning to be much more improved than they are today. So the more you test the vehicles on the roads and you're able to map those roads out, it's possible to put autonomous uh, cars on the road. That will still take a while. So we believe it will take another three to five years in getting the legislation, getting the technology perfected. I believe before we see autonomous cars, we'll see a lot more connected, electric, and new business models, especially talking about connectivity in cars. We expect about 80 to 100 digital connected car services coming in. Some of them are really exciting. The company's talking about, for example, marketplace in a car. So all your on-route mobility services could be actually paid and access through your car, for example, when you want to fuel your car, or for example, you want to pay toll collect, or any other services that you use when you're driving from A to B. Also, we'll start seeing some new health, wellness, well-being type of features in cars. We'll see more features on demand. So for example, you have a car and you want some extra mileage, uh, for example, on an electric car to go from A to B, you might be able to pay $2. You want a special towing service, or you want to take your car out for a spin on a racetrack, you know, those kind of services will come in. So what we will see is the car go from being perhaps an island product, so the car and the connected services only work in the car, to the car actually becoming an element of a connected living solution. So the car will interact with certain features at home, it will interact with certain features within your city. So vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure communication will become a lot more exciting. And as we see more autonomy come in, and as we see 4G and 5G in cars coming in, we also expect satellite broadband in cars in the future. You might be even able to watch a Netflix movie when driving from Dubai to Abu Dhabi. We believe the future of mobility is door-to-door -door integrated mobility using multiple modes of transport. So it's not station to station, it's not predetermined routes, it's door-to-door. -door. And there are a number of business models coming in. So ride hailing is one of the key ones. This is about a 400, 450 billion industry expected to become over a trillion dollar industry globally, which makes you think maybe Uber's you know, IPO uh, is, is well calculated uh, in those terms. So yes, we expect over 17 million fleet of uh, ride hailing cars in the future. We expect ride hailing companies also move into a subscription based model. So based on how you use, you, you can use those vehicles and also to offer a lot more services. So for example, in the future, you might get access to an integrated platform where payment and use of multiple modes of transport in some of the busy cities could be absolutely seamless. What we found is the cities in Middle East were actually lagging behind with the exception of Dubai. 
Dubai featured in, uh, in number four in our autonomous index. And as a matter of fact, even with some of the new uh, legislation that has come in and some of the new testing that the RTA has told us, Dubai's ranking would even possibly go up. But most of the other cities like Doha, we looked at, we looked at cities like Abu Dhabi, they have a fair bit of work to do. Our research finds that in major cities in, in the region, there is no, perhaps with the exception of cities like Dubai, there isn't a cohesive plan to look at some of these new initiatives and trends in mobility. Uh, for example, when it comes to sharing data or digital transformation or having a vision, you know, we find most cities today have a vision on sustainability. They have a very defined plan of bringing electric vehicles and they put a vision out, for example, many cities say they will ban diesel in the middle of the cities uh, by 2025 or even 2030. That is something that is missing. I think on the digital side, how do you treat data? How do you leverage that data? How do you provide advanced mobility services with the data? Is something that we have seen is lacking. Dubai ranked very high in our smart mobility index, especially when it came to autonomous. Um, also, the city is doing a lot in terms of some of the other initiatives, but also some areas where we thought the city could do better could be, for example, on the digital strategy, have more APIs, have more data, have it more freely available. We also found that the city spends per capita spending of the city on transport is very high. It's only behind cities like Singapore and Tokyo. So, so uh, overall, huge, huge credit uh, to Dubai there. Uh, we also believe Dubai can be a model city for bringing in autonomous technology. Um, one of the interesting things we found is in the past, it was maybe countries or states, as we've seen in the US, who drive legislation for adopting autonomous. But recently, we've seen cities like Shanghai, Beijing, and interestingly, Dubai, who want to take that initiative of bringing autonomous vehicles into the city. If you look at where autonomous will be deployed, especially in the beginning, it'll be deployed in a restricted, semi-restricted environment. It'll be short trips and it needs a very flat topography and it needs a lot more the kind of layout in terms of geography and the road infrastructure that we have in Dubai. Absolutely perfect to launch autonomous vehicles. I believe flying taxis are still 10 to 15 years from commercial operation, but we believe a certain type of the, like the Kitty Hawk from, uh, from Google, where you can fly 20 to 30 meters over water at low speeds because legislation allows that, we might see them. There's a rumor that uh, Toyota might uh, light the Tokyo Olympics with a flying car. Now that would be really amazing. That just might make the market go differently. Um, but again, I have some interesting analysis. For example, recently I was in the Sao Paulo and you can rent uh, one of the helicopters for $40 to do a journey there. And Sao Paulo is the helicopter capital of the world. So, you know, it might not be so difficult to imagine. And I, I do believe the helicopter industry will be highly impacted by these uh, flying drones perhaps in the future.